All right, today we're going to look at a real world scenario, a real world simulation. We're going to look at this document and then we're going to implement a solution based on the document. If I go too fast, you can pause the video and read the document through yourself. But it goes as follows. The situation. Our client receives one inbound HL7 message feed over TCP IP, which contains both demographic messages, ADT messages, and ORU messages, lab results. For our example, we're assuming that this HL7 feed is coming from the practice management system, a PMS, and the intended destination is the electronic medical record software, the EMR. The client also has a problem in that they're unhappy with the way that their EMR software handles a specific type of HL7 message, the ADT A23, the delete a patient message. And um, as is usually the case, the EMR software vendor can't or won't change their system, and the PMS can't or won't stop sending the offending HL7 message type. Now this might be true, or it might be that just they want to charge an obscene amount of money to do it. Now the client also wants to create two new interfaces from this same HL7 feed. They want one that receives only the demographic messages, the ADT messages, and one that receives only the lab result messages, the ORU messages, and they want the information for both of those each in a separate SQL database. Our solution. For our interface, we need to intercept the inbound feed and filter out the unwanted messages. Then we need to split up the three feeds, the single feed into three different feeds as shown below. And all this needs to happen with as little change or interruption to the current process as possible. Remember, we're injecting ourselves into a production environment. So let's set up this scenario. The practice management system is currently sending the HL7 message to the EMR on this computer on port 5000. So what we want to do is intercept those. So right now they're sending to the EMR on port 5000. So we're going to use the ultra port listener to receive the messages on port 5000 and we're going to tell the EMR to change their port from 5000 to 6000. Now for this, we're going to use our router simulator to simulate the PMS. As you see, it has this file loaded up. What this file is, is about 339 HL7 messages. There are ORU messages. There are ADT messages. And you can see that there are also several of these offending A23 messages in this pipe. Our older port router is a free product. It will send to any HL7 listener. It's going to send, when we do begin simulation, it's going to send all 339 of those messages. Now, where to? Let's go here. It's going to come into our ultra port HL7 listener. This is where we have our starting point. Remember, we're now going to be receiving on port 5000, and we're going to put the messages into this folder. C, HL7 messages central distribution. This other profile that we have set up is a simulation of the EMR receiving endpoint, just so that we have a complete pass through for our proof of concept. Now from here, it's going to get passed off to the Ultraport HL7 Postmaster, which we have set up here. It's going to pick up messages out of the central distribution folder and it's going to apply some logic to them. It is going, we've created a rubbish bin that's going to kill all the ADT A23 messages. As it sees them, it just trashes them. Then we've got a folder destination that goes out to the EMR. This will, this will then, all of the messages that are left over after it's taken out the ADT A23s will go out to this folder. Then we've got another folder destination where we're going to direct only the ADT messages to. And then we're going to have a last folder where we will direct only the ORU messages to. And then from there, they're going to go into the SQL schema engine and the, and the ultra port router. Now I'm going to set all of those up and we'll be back in a moment. And voila, we're back. Now in truth, to actually set up and configure 
this scenario as a proof of concept, it honestly took about 20 minutes to create the listener profiles, to create the postmaster uh, profiles, to create the schema engine profiles, and the ultraport router. So after that, here we are and we're ready to run. And it's going to work like this. Remember the router simulator is simulating our PMS sending messages to this computer on port 5000. It's going to send messages over to the HL7 listener on port 5000, which is going to receive it and write it to this folder. Then our HL7 postmaster is going to pick it up, pick messages up that come into here. It's going to filter out the offending message, the ADT A23 messages, and then out of all the messages that are left, it's going to write all of them into a folder for our Ultraport router to send out to the EMR. And it's going to write the ADT messages into a folder to go into a SQL Schema Engine uh, database and all the ORU messages out to another folder which will go into a separate database. What we did in SQL Server, we just created two databases one for HL7 ADT, one for HL7 ORU, because that's what our document said they wanted. And all of this is going to happen when I click Begin Simulation. Now what's important to note is the impact that this has had on the client's process. The PMS, when this is done, it has had no impact at all. They don't even know that, that anything happened. They're just going to continue sending in to port 5000 and getting acknowledgments back the way they always have. The only change that we actually made to the client's process was we told their EMR to change their endpoint, their, their listener port, from 5,000 to 6,000. So we're ready to see it all go and begin simulation. Now there's messages are coming in. Our postmaster is picking them up. Our router is already forwarding them out, and now they're coming into the databases. And at this point, we are just about completely finished. Done. On this. We've done everything that they wanted in this scenario. Nothing changed for the PMS. The EMR uh, made one small change and we can implement this uh, completely. If we go into our database, we can browse our AAA the ADT messages. Here they are. And you'll notice that there are no A23 messages anywhere in this. If we go into our ORU messages, here's all of our ORUs separated out nice and tidy. Now what does all this cost? Well, Total costs. To set up this scenario using every product that, that we've shown, that's the simulator, the Ultraport listener, the Ultraport HL7 postmaster, the Ultraport schema engine, the Ultraport router, for all of those products, for a developer workstation, that's developer licenses for everything, and that includes the Ultraport HL7 notepad, would be about US $600 with discounts. For a production system, VM, running professional licenses, the total with bundle discounts would be between $1,500 and $1,700. That's depending on whether you wanted the Ultraport notepad on your server as well. And for everything used as shown in a HL7 Plus subscription would be about $10 per month billed annually. And there it is. That's how easy it is to actually implement a real-world situation using our Ultraport HL7 products. Thank you.